Well, hello and welcome to one of our weekly reflections here in St. Peter Mancroft Church. My name is Ben Armand and I'm a member of the ministry team here in St. Peter Mancroft. So you're sitting down inside a bus. You are the first person to get inside and you sit at the back as you wait and watch and see other passengers come on board. You get to your first stop and another passenger gets on board, shows their bus pass to the driver and sits down in their seat. They pause for a moment, put on some headphones plugged in or wirelessly connected to a mobile device. They lean back into their chair and they watch the screen. You get to the second stop on your route and another passenger walks onto the bus. They again show their bus pass or maybe put some change in for a bus ticket and sit down socially distanced on another seat. This time they get out their mobile device, they plug in their headphones and sit back in their seat, staring out at the window on the other side. You reach the next stop on your route and on walks the third passenger. As the bus was pulling up to the stop, you notice them reading and texting away on their mobile device. This, you observe, is something that they manage to do without ever averting their gaze from the bus stop to sitting down on the seating, getting onto the bus and showing their ticket in the meantime. Privately, you wonder what could be grabbing their attention to such an extent. And then you reach the penultimate stop on your bus journey. A fourth other passenger walks onto the bus, looks around as if to get a cursory glance as to where the seating might be available before they pay their fare, and once they have done so, sit down in a seat, inhale slowly and slowly exhale, and look around at the bus, at their surroundings, as they take in their environment, or they can see and hear as they relax into the final part of the journey. My guess is that by the time the bus has reached its final stop, if you've observed all of this, you will have seen some rather different ways in which to approach the journey. The first passenger after you, the one who watched their mobile device with their headphones plugged in, I would suggest listened neither with their ears or their eyes to their surroundings. The second passenger, the one who listened to music while staring outward, wasn't listening outwardly with their ears whilst they were with their eyes. The third passenger, the one texting and messaging away, perhaps counter to this, was listening with their ears, but less so with their eyes, to what was going on around them. And the final passenger that got onto the bus sat down and listened with both their ears and their eyes to their surroundings. As you may have guessed by now, in my talk this afternoon, I want to provide one or two small comments about the value of something all of us do increasingly less in our more technically advanced age. Something many of us, I think, would benefit from doing more of, and that is listening. Spending time alone in silence, taking in the environment around us and relaxing into our surroundings. For the past two years now, just before Lent has come around, when thinking about what I could look at giving up, the thought of foregoing time spent on YouTube, I've entertained only briefly before coming to the conclusion that I simply didn't think I had it within me to do so. I suppose, therefore, that I am part of that problem. Being brought up in a world where we are encouraged to be constantly visually and orally stimulated, distracted by doing other things. I can even remember once noticing a friend of mine on his phone playing music and skipping the song every 10 seconds or so to something else, not being able, it seemed to me, simply to 
take the time to relax, play a piece of music from start to finish, and enjoy that music for all of its beauty before moving on. And who can blame him when we see the sort of world we live in? Music is available to us 24-7 for free in many cases, whereas for my parents, television had clearly marked times when broadcasts were made, particularly those designed for children. For today's average Briton with access to the internet, visually too, we can be entertained non-stop. But I think in doing this, we are missing out on one key ability, and that is the ability to enjoy. I remember how excited I was when our family got Netflix and signed onto our grandparents' Amazon Prime account. I am just about old enough to remember VHS and children's TV that didn't run full time, and where you had to watch programs at a particular place, the television, and on a particular broadcasting time. And suddenly, not just on our television screens, but on our mobile devices, Kindles, iPads, tablets, and laptops, we were able to watch exactly the programs we did want to watch, on demand, constantly, wherever we were, and often without the adverts that sat in the middle of them. No longer did we have to wait for a particular time in that day or miss the program. No longer did we have to settle for what was on TV at a particular time that we wanted to watch and compromise, especially during the daytime for the least worst thing we could find. But you know, there's something I miss about growing up without it. A lot of the excitement of waiting for a program and watching it together with other people at the same time went completely. And scrolling through the list of saved programs rather than liberating seems at times rather daunting, as well as the fact that it doesn't stop within you as necessitated the restraints of the past, the discipline to stop. And sometimes stopping can be the hardest thing we can do, when I'm driving through Norfolk, sometimes turning off the radio can be a hard thing to do. But it's within that silence that I begin to discover a much longer lasting feeling of satisfaction. When I go to a restaurant with other people, even though it's nice when I hear one of my favorite songs played through the loudspeaker, I miss the ability to settle into silence, simply enjoying the company of those who I am with viewing silence not as something to be avoided by cramming all sorts of noise pollution into our lives, but about valuing the time where we relax into ourselves and we appreciate where we are. Music and videos are not in themselves bad, but it is our use of them that often makes them so in us, in the extent that sometimes I can even look at my own habits before concluding that you really can have too much of a good thing. I think if we learn to ration more, to reflect on what it is to listen and watch more sparingly, more deliberately, rather than making those things the background of our lives, we can begin to discover far more their value in aiding our spiritual and entertainment needs. And so let us end in what I hope will be an encouragement as well as a prayer. God of beauty, in your creation there are so many wonderful sounds and sights. Both here in Norfolk and across the world, you have given us so much to listen to, to look at and enjoy. Help us to appreciate all that is good in our lives and all that gives us aid and comfort in sight and sound on our phones, and in what we see where we are around us. Help us to achieve a better balance between listening to our devices and to our surroundings. And may we discover you when we look for you in what we see and hear. Amen.